Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to another episode in my Football Manager Save. This is episode number 18. It's today returning with two big games, away against Newcastle United and away against Portsmouth at Fratton Park. Before we get to the games though, shall we all be getting on off camera? And they've also made a couple of really exciting signings in the January window as well. And so with a key squad player as well. We'll get to that in just a moment's time. Uh, so, of course, in the last episode, we had the 1-1 draw away against Brentford and the 2-0 loss away against Spurs. Played eight games in run off camera. And as you can see, a really mixed bag of results here. Starting with a 1-0 victory at home to Liverpool. Yet we beat now Allegri's Liverpool by a goal to nil. Uh, Dominic Sanke scoring the only goal of the game. And it's one right before the break as he goes for his third straight year as top scorer in this team. And a 1-0 win on Boxing Day. And then following that, three days later, we drew 1-1 away against West Ham. Daniel Amarty scored the opener, making it 1-0. But Traore found a leveller. And Mamadash Vili also saved a penalty in this game as well in a 1-1 draw. And then following that, New Year's Day, a 2-0 win against newly promoted Southampton in a South Coast derby. Once again, a brace for that man up top, Dominic Solanke, as he started the month off strong with a 2-0 victory. But following that, 1-0 loss away at Stamford Bridge against Chelsea. To be honest here, we would be really lucky to get a point. And played horribly. Lukaku scored late on as Chelsea got the three points. But following that, back to back wins, uh, starting with a 4 2 victory away against Sheffield United in the Championship at Bramwell Lane. You know those games where like one player is just absolutely dominating? Martin Batrida in this game. Like, he scored our first goal, and then Dai got the blades back on level terms. Solanke restored Ali, but the third goal, his through ball for Solanke, literally inch perfect. It's like, like I was watching KDB. Unbelievable show from Batrida in this game, and uh, Tavernier scored our final one late on as he won by four goals, too, to make a free the effort fourth round. That's why we're taking on Portsmouth away from over Fratton Park in a chance to reach the last 16 for the first time in the save. But before we get there, uh, following game after Sheffield United, 2 1 victory at home to the league leader Spurs uh, fell behind really early on in this game we did respond Marcus Tavernier firing in our leveller and then Dominic Solanke from the spot of half an hour to go as he completed a comeback there on Tottenham Hotspur but after that unfortunately no wins in our last two games starting off with a 2-1 loss away uh, sorry 2-1 loss at home to Crystal Palace God knows how he didn't win this game. Though. We like, absolutely dominated in this game and somehow lost it. The first goal. Oh, Georgies. He's come good after a tough start, but how on earth did that go in? Awful header. And he flapped at it as Palace took the lead. Antonio Blanco scored his first goal for the club. Great strike to level it but late on the game. Lorenzo Luca sent with the ball over the top. One-on-one. -on -one, rounded Georgie and slotted in for Crystal Palace's, I would say, undeserved win. We should have won that game in the end. Lost it by two goals to one. But the final game, 1-1 uh, draw at home to Brentford. Uh, Solanke opening the scoring in this one, giving us the lead, but seven minutes forward to break the shocker. Leveled for the Bees in the end. What was a 1-1 one, one draw. So, yeah, just one win in our last three Premier League games, and it's why after an inconsistent run of form, as you can see, we dropped down to seventh in the table. There's 12 games to go. Now, we do have the game in hand on Liverpool, who are above by three points. If we win our first game today, away at the Magpies against Newcastle, we'll jump into sixth. But Newcastle, who we take on today, just the two points behind us. So I'm I'm not thinking about the top four. I'm not thinking about it one bit or 12 games to go. All I'm thinking about is this. Can we stay in a European place of some point? Well, it's it's very tight indeed. Even even top 10 right now is still, it's still going to be tough with 12 games to go. We, we're obviously safe, but can we stay in a European place? So I know you'll want to know what's been going on in terms of transfers, and here we go. So the big sale in the end was Jaden Anthony. Yes, this is a very interesting one indeed. Jaden Anthony was on the books of Arsenal as a youngster who was let go, joined Bournemouth, and I was playing over 100 league games for us here, averaging about one goal in every 10. Leeds put in a bid, and I was, I was not predicting it at all on deadline day. It's out of nowhere. You know those bids to come out of left field? I was like, hang on a minute. Leeds are just putting a bid for Jaden Anthony. What? And in the end, Anthony said he wanted to go, so I said, fair enough. 13 and three quarter mil was the initial fee with add ons and clauses. It could raise to 17 and three quarter million. Honestly, like to me, the market valuation I think is a bit inflated. I don't think Jaden Anthony, I, I, I know he's English, I know he's homegrown, we know all about the English player tax, but I don't think he's worth 30 to 44 million. So to me, the transfer fee we've got, I'd say, is quite fair. Quite fair. Yes, he's in the peak of his career right now at 25 years old, and he's a handy squad player to our very, very quick as we know 
But really, he's he's quite average, Jaden Anthony. And we know he's quite overloaded through the middle and on the flanks as well. So I was okay letting him go. We just one and a half years left in this deal. So yeah, Jaden Anthony gone to Leeds. And uh, again, whilst the market valuation seems quite inflated there, personally speaking, I think the fee we got was quite realistic, all things considered, to be fair for a squad player. But the two new signings, very exciting. Both signed on deadline day. Two young 18-year-olds. And I certainly can't call them wonder kids, but they are players to look out for for the future. Uh, Jorge Milanovic was the first of the two signings I made here. This is a Serbian youth international that I picked up here from the Serbian Super League. Already played a couple of games and got a goal in both of them as well. Not bad for a fullback, eh? 1.7 mil flat fee, no clauses, no installments. You know I can't stand it. 1.7 mil and as a fullback, he, he kind of just reminds me a bit like Kyle Walker-Peters really. Good stamina. He's got enough pace. He's okay. He'll grow. He's only 18 years old and again mentally, he's got 15 plus for the Holy Tree. So it kind of reminds me a bit of Kyle Walker-Peters. They can play both fullback uh, sides as well. And he's six foot two as well, so maybe, 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 maybe 12 jump, he could be turned into a defender at one point, or actually, say a centre half. But the other signing is the, the most exciting. David Garza. Lads, now this is the one to look out for. No doubt about that. This guy looks the real deal. Picked up from America. We've done tons of business with America in Mexico already, but for £8 million, he's been a regular ever since he came out of the academy there in the Mexican First Division. Regular start for them this season. Already got a goal in pro football. Signed for eight mil. No clauses, no installments, absolute flat fee. And this dude, he excites me. Just 18 years old, six foot four, really tall, great balance already, really, really brave. I want the aggression and composure to get up. But other than that, really solid mental, 12 positioning and 14 heading, 15 tackling and 13 for marking and also passing as well, which is quite crucial when we're playing out from the back. This guy looks really good, resolute personality. And again, just 18 years old. Long way to go, but already, already to me, looks like a decent squad centre half for a mid-table sort of Premier League side. I'm very excited about him. And the final thing I'll show you in terms of transfers as well is I turned down a bit for Jefferson Lerma. Lerma asked to leave. He says he wants to move on for a new challenge. And I was like, fair enough, I won't stand in your way because you're now a squad CM for us here. But... The bid I got from Zenit St. Petersburg, you're having a laugh, mate. This guy's worth at least 14 to 15 mil. They offered me 3.6 mil up front, and the rest was if he plays 50 league games. Get out of here. What a terrible deal that would have been. But Duvan Zapata is going to be a one-and-done year for the Colombian. Came in, scored that hat-trick, which we'll never forget at the end. It's got four goals in 13, but he's going to join Sporting on a free transfer come the end of the season. Totally fine with me. Signed him as a squad striker. He's done what I've asked, just like Zlatan did last season. So, um, I believe that is pretty much it. I want to show you the finances real quick. We're up to 10.5 mil on the back of the sale of Jay and Anthony there. And the wage bill has also gone down to 1.2 mil as well. You love to see it. As we enter the first game, Aussie's episode of Wayne in the North East against Newcastle United on Wednesday night. This is massive. Magpies win. They leapfrog us and go into seventh. We win. We jump into sixth. And we'll take a five-point gap on Jose Mourinho's side. Bring it. Absolutely massive game here. So heading into the game, uh, we're going to play the 4 3 3, and this will be our team right now in Ninja Port. Trejo went down, uh, and he's been long term injured as well with a, uh, a calf strain out for the next two to four weeks, and this will be our team. It's the only player injured right now. Georgie is in goal. Back for us, Kelly, Sanessi, Mepham, and Aaron with Cook, McTominay, and Scott through the middle. But Trina, I've been, I've been sharing his game time between where he normally plays, which is advanced playmaker, and on that left hand side. He's just as good in both roles, really, to be fair. So it's nice to know he can play both. Tavernier is on the right, and the second highest scorer in the league this year is up top for us. That's Dominic Solanke. On the bench, Travers, Zavani, Walk, Peters, Nandez, Forsby, Lerma, Blanco, Brooks, and Zapata. First of the big two games, Newcastle away. Can we take a five point gap in a European place? Come on, you cherries. Oh, sorry, it's not Mourinho now. Mourinho's been sacked. Sorry. Um, oh, yeah, and how to forget as well, uh, Callum Wilson got recalled by Newcastle as well. Uh, Callum Wilson was recalled by Newcastle because he wasn't playing here. And I was like, oh, fair enough. And then uh, they put him on a transfer as soon as he came back. And he's out of contract come the end of the season anyway. It's like, what? What was the point in that? Like, you might as well just left him with me. Like, if you're not going to play him, he was a bench striker for me. I, yeah, whatever. You can have him back if you want. I don't mind. He barely played for us. And he's out of contract come the end of the season anyway. So <laughs> if they don't give him a new deal, I might just pick him up on a free transfer. Even so, first game Magpies, man. This is huge, man. I did not expect us to be where we are. If we could finish in a European place, whether it's Conference League or Europa League, I don't care. European football at Bournemouth next year would be a mad one. 
But long way to go in the first highlight coming to the Magpies as Cameron takes a touch. Back to Sven Botman. And the centre half looks for a bit of space as he dribbles inside. And was that a shot or a cross? Well, it almost snuck in. One thing that really helps is that our goal difference is far superior to the teams that are below us in the table right now. So that does mean if it comes down to it, then we'll most likely finish above anyone else equal on points. But, like I said, long way to go. And with our form being inconsistent, just one win in our last four, we could really do with one here. But instead, if we're going to get it, we'll have to come from behind. Alexander Isaac fires the Magpies in front. Tough start. Haven't got going yet, but it's okay. Plenty of game to go. And I'm sure we'll create a chance of some sort. Not before long. That's a poor pass. Thankfully got away with it, Lewis Cook. And McTominay plays it back to Georgie. Nerves early here from this inexperienced Bournemouth team. Knowing what's at stake. Are we really good enough for a European place? I don't know about that. As Methan finds Scott. And Alex on the turn. Lovely turn. And a better through ball. And Solanke should have fired us back on the world terms. Great stop by Emmy Martinez. Well, I think he's going to do it for the half. Magpies, as things stand, are going to leapfrog us and jump into seventh. But you know what? Look at the stats here. We've, we've played okay. We've had one good chance, just didn't take it. So I still think we can get back in this game here. Scott McTominay with a lovely ball over the top. Solanke nods on Katavani. I get there, he can. But it's a very tight angle, to be fair, on the weaker right foot. It's a pretty simple save with the former Aston Villa and Arsenal goalkeeper. So 1 0. Do you know what? We're doing okay here. We're doing all right. And I'm, I'm very lenient on my boys in the break when we're playing okay. So I'm just going to say we've been unlucky so far. We've been unlucky. Keep the boys' body language good. Don't fire them up too much and possibly lose their motivation or lose their confidence. Just just keep it calm. I always like to do it. If I'm playing well, I should say we're playing well. We just don't have to rub it the green. Just keep it calm in the dressing room. A reminder, boys, sometimes just how it is. Keep your heads up. Let's go. Come on, McTominay. Cook. Poor Parson. Oh, God, I should have fired them up. <laughs> I should have fired them up. I should have fired them up. If Newcastle make it too, I think that's going to be game. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> oh, yeah, I like to do this when we're playing well. You shout out the road with the green. Keep it calm. You're unlucky, lads. Yeah, great start. Great start to the second half. To be fair, I did take a deflection out of Chris Metham, I think it was. Two for the Mad Pies, though. And uh, unless we can pull this out of the bag as Martinez fumbles that free kick behind for a corner. We're going to drop down to 8th place. And it would be one win in our last five in the Premier League. Tough. Really tough. You, you, can't, you can't finish in European place with that sort of form. We're a very inexperienced team. It's not a surprise, but even so. Still time, though. Still time. As the corner is headed away. But we, we desperately need a goal between now and the 70th minute, I'd say. Lewis Cook to Max Ahrens. And the former Canary finds Kelly. And the captain back to Senesi and into Cook. And over the top to Tavernier. He's got to take this, Marcus. He doesn't. We've had a chance. Just then taken him. As the highlight continues. Metham. Oh, Chris. What was that? I always need to remind myself that the 3D match engine is just the best way the game can determine what's going on in the game. It shouldn't be taken 100% literally, but... Uh... I don't care, because that's just fucking shit. <laughs> what was he doing? It's like he forgot what he was doing during the game. It's like he literally forgot he was playing football. It's like, did I, did I leave the oven on? I can't, I can't remember. <laughs> oh my god, seriously. Blanco, great ball. Betrina, oh man. I mean, this is, this is the thing. Like We're 3-0 down, but we, we've had chances. We've had chances. Great save away, Emmy Martinez. But we should have at least scored. At the very least, got one back in this one. This is this is frustrating. Just one of those games, unfortunately. You're going to stat to, you know, we actually played quite well out there. You know, the XG was only slightly lower than Newcastle's. Really, noticeably lower, not really. I mean, that's, that's frustrating, that. That's frustrating. I mean, it's... Ugh. Lads, I'm trying to defend you. Well, that was a good performance. Maybe not at the back, but going forward, yeah. Like, if we create that many chances, nine times out of ten, we'll win. You know. <laughs> oh, man. We ain't, we ain't going to make Europe. Forget it. We ain't going to make Europe. We just we just don't have the quality to be a European team. Well, we're getting there. We're getting there. Don't get me wrong. And our defence this year has been brilliant, apart from that game where we shipped three goals. But, you know, we are getting there. But we're still, I still think we're like one or two really quality players away from being like a top seven, top six team. Especially in, in the back line. I know our defense has been really good this year, but we need like a class center half, I think. 
Slow and steady, boys. Slow and steady. Trust the process. Right, then, second and final game today. It is indeed going to be a South Coast derby away at Fratton Park against Pompey. Looking forward to this. Portsmouth, by the way, in League One right now. Ninth going for a playoff place. And you might have just seen who their manager is as well. Jesse Marsh. Jesse Marsh now in charge of Pompey. So last year it was Frank Lampard's Plymouth Argyle that knocked us out. This year will it be Jesse Marsh's uh, Portsmouth away at Fram Park. So heading into the game, uh, going to stick with a 4-3-3 and you know, not have a knee-jerk reaction to that 3-0 loss there. But there will be some changes to the personnel. Chris Meffens Bass banished to the shadow realm after that game. He's dropped for this one. And this is our team. Uh, Georgie will stay between the sticks. Or should I give Travers a go? I mean, George hasn't been too great. I'm going to give Travers a go. I'm going to go with Travers. Travers in goal. Back for is Kelly, Sonesi, and a debut for David Garson. The 18-year-old thrown in at Fratton Park. You know, Walker Peters right back. Uh, Scott now changed the deep line playmaker with Tom and A and Blanco just ahead. Vatrina on the left. Brooks now comes in on the right. And Solanke will still lead our line. On the bench, it will be Georgie, Zavani, Andy Afban, Nandes, Forsby, Lerma, Cook, Cavanier, and Zapata as well. Second and final game, Pompey away. Will we have a cup set for the second year in a row? Or will we reach the last 16 for the first time in the save? Let's find out. Come with your charities. Come on, Bournemouth. Get, get down with a few early touches. Get a few early touches for the kid. So Lanke is through. Great tackle. It will drop to Brooks, though. And in the end, it's a pretty simple claim for the goalkeeper. Get, get down with some early touches. Debut for the 18-year-old kid. And he's lost his man. And the chip. Is, oh, he's clipped the top of the bar. Jeez. This is not the game to throw the 18-year-old in. Gamble. Gamble. Throwing him in. But he's, you know, he's got KWP, Sanessi. And Kelly. Oh, yes! Garza, the great. The great Garza. Bournemouth lead. Brooks floated in. And Javid, 11 minutes into his Bournemouth debut, heads us in front. Go on, the kid. Well, that was unexpected. Um, wow. Okay, all right. Bournemouth in front. But let's keep it calm, boys. Our form's been awful recently, so... And after last year's embarrassing cup set to Plymouth, let's just keep it calm, yeah. Scott McTomin, a great through ball, but in the end, Solanke didn't read it, and it goes straight through to the goalkeeper. Okay, all right. 17 minutes in as David wins the header, and it's played back to Mark Travers. <laughs> God, I did not expect that. Forward come to Cherries. Scott, back to Senesi, and we'll work our way forward patiently instead. Sensible, sensible. That's not sensible. But Petrina's going to chase it down anyway and win it. And cut it back, and it should have been two. Massive block on Solanke. What's David's body language like? I'd like to see that. Pleased. Yeah, I'm pleased as well, mate. Very pleased. So I think it's going to do it for the first half. Still leading by a goal. Pompey not really getting any other chances than that one right at the start. So as things stand, still leading by a goal. I think, I think we need a goal, though. I think we'll need another goal to, sh to see this game out. But so far, we're doing well. Dominating possession, in control of the game. Get, get a second goal. And I feel pretty comfortable. I've got confident we'll see this game out. Now we're into the game. Solanke turns his man and plays it back to David Brooks. And Blanco gets his second in the Bournemouth shirt. And that will surely do it there. 2-0. And Antonio Blanco's first in the cup, second overall. And Bournemouth lead by two. Two assists for David Brooks as well. The, the, the changes in personnel have really worked here. Garza's has got one. Blanco's got one. And Brooks has set them both up. It's worked brilliantly. That's a great response there, away at Fratton Park. We avoid the embarrassment of a second straight year, having a cup set, and we are in to, actually, the third straight year, and we are into the last 16 for the first time in the save, and what a debut for David Garza, the great Garza heading in, our first of the two goals. That's it then, into the last 16 of the FA Cup, and before we end today's episode off, we'll have to see the draw, definitely. That's on Wednesday, isn't it? Yeah, no, is it, where is it? I thought it was Wednesday. When's the FA Cup draw? I'm tempted just to throw Garza in between now and the rest of the season and play him in the majority of our games. I'm, I'm very tempted to maximise that potential. But obviously if we do that, then we know it's... I mean, that's, that's one thing playing well against Portsmouth away in League One. It's another thing when you've got to cope with Manchester United at Old Trafford as an 18-year-old. Anyway, uh, it turns out that the FA Cup draw is actually here on the Monday evening. So we'll do this one together. FA Cup fifth round, and we shall end it here. Look at the scouting. I'm not giving up on a NATO return at some point here, but there are some really good young 18-year-olds I'm finding now, I must admit. Anyway, heading into the draw then. Uh, let's do it. And who's doing the draw? Have you guys seen this, by the way? It's Van Nistelrooy doing the draw here. This is quite cool from FM. You get like a, a sort of an icon, a football icon doing the draw it's it's quite a cool way of doing it you know
So first draw is Brentford against Liverpool or Stoke. Okay, so it does it like kind of automatically. You can change the speed. You can just advance to the next team if you want to go through it straight away. It's quite cool. Though. Actually, I, I like this quite a lot, to be fair. Anyway, Chelsea up next. Is it going to be us? It's not. No offense to Luton, but I really want Luton. Luton, Barnsley, or Burnley and Huddersfield. Those are the teams I'm hoping for. Come on, Rude. Come on, Rude. Put us out the at notice, Newcastle. God, Rude. Home draw against Barnsley, please. Home draw against Barnsley. That's the one I want. Draw, draw Man City, please, here, Rude, please. Yes, thank you, Rude. Love to go to Wembley for the first time in a save, man. We'll have to get through two more rounds. We're going to do it. But next team, West Ham. I think it might be us here, you know. And it is indeed. It's West Ham. Called it. And it will be... I don't I just get straight to the end. Here. There we go, advanced 20. It'll be West Ham. And Barnsley have got loot. And I tell you what, one of those teams going to the quarters... If we can knock out West Ham, so it's a big ask. If we knock out West Ham away, they're in 11th right now. Imagine if we get drawn against a Barnsley or Luton. What a chance we'll have to get into Wembley. Anyway, that's going to do it for today's episode, guys. So, big thank you for watching. We really hope you have enjoyed. If you have, then please do drop a like. Um, much love to you. Have a fantastic day. We'll have to come back for that one, surely, man. Last 16 the FA Cup. Can't really miss that, can we? So, yeah, let's do West Ham away. And, and also Luton, rock bottom right now at Kenilworth Road. So, not too much of a gap between the episodes, but I can't really miss that FA Cup last 16 game. Thirds we've gone so far. Have a great day. Much love. And I'll see you for that one very soon.